Hello, hello, here we go, it's the Copyright Podcast. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Copyright Podcast. As always, it's Jay and it's Vic with you today and it is quite a special episode. Now, if you're old enough to remember, there's, a, there's quite a famous photo of uh, Phil Thompson and Gerard Ullier pictured with six new arrivals at Anfield in the summer of 1999. All six names have gone down in Anfield folklore, but there's one of those names uh, that has well and truly established himself as a cult hero. The big Dutchman arrived at Anfield wearing his heart on his sleeve. He played reserve games like, they were, like it was a cup final. He played first team games like it was his last in football. He was brilliant in interviews. He got pissed with the fans in Dortmund in 2001. He was known as Mad Eric and he'll forever be named. That is shared very fondly with Liverpool fans and we are very pleased to welcome cult hero Eric Meyer. Eric, thanks so much for joining us today, mate. We really appreciate it. Um, how are you? Wow, what an intro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just me, Eric. Uh, <laughs> nice to be with you guys. And um, yes, it's okay here. I mean, uh, near, I live just near Maastricht, my town where I grew up. And uh, I'm sitting in the room where uh, I'm with my parents, drinking a cup of coffee like I do every week and uh, just enjoying the interview. So come, come, come with the questions. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. Well, we're dead excited for it. So let's just start how the move to Liverpool came about. I mean, you were playing for Bayer Leverkusen in the Bundesliga, playing up front with, uh, with Ulf Kirsten and forming quite a formidable partnership. But yeah. what can you remember? What, uh, when, was, when was you aware of the interest from Liverpool? Uh, we we played the uh, Champions League, and uh, then you get a lot of attention. Not only in the weekend in the Bundesliga, because we we played on top with Bayern Munich, and um, yeah, with the Champions League, you also have the opportunity to to show yourself midweeks. And I, I did. Uh, I played with uh, with Kirsten in front of uh, Leverkusen, and um, I think phew, when did I hear about the interest? It must be around November, December. And um, then I got a phone call, and the other end was somebody with a French accent. And he asked me, do you want to play for Liverpool FC? It was uh, Gerard Houllier. And uh, uh, I got goosebumps, because from a small kid on, I'm, I'm a Liverpool fan, and I still am. Um, once a year, there was English football on television, and that uh, was the FA Cup final. And from my point of view, there was just one team that was always in the final. It had a red shirt and it had a striker called Ian Rush. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I got that phone call in the uh, end of November, uh, start of December, I said, wow, me playing for that club? I, I said immediately, yes, I want. Yeah, I'm not surprised, mate. And, you know, it's, it, it's great for you to hear that as well, because at the time, Liverpool... We, we were still a huge name in football, but at the time we probably weren't the most dominating force like we have been in the past, like you've just said. Um, but obviously the motivation was there for you, for you to come to the club. And at the time we had two of the best strikers in England and arguably in the world <laughs> yeah. at the time with, with Michael Owen and Robbie Fowler. But that must have excited you to work with them and join that strike force. Um, that was also what uh, Gerald Lewis told me. He said, we have two smaller guys who are technically well and maybe they, they need uh, a big guy next to them. Uh, a, a big guy in front who we, can, who we can use to let others play better. And that should be my, uh, my position. And that, uh, that's the way why I came over to Liverpool. I'm not better than Owen. I'm certainly not better than Robbie Fowler. I knew that from the beginning on. But maybe I could add something to the team that was not yet there. Yeah, and it worked course. well till Emil Heskey came. He was, well, as big as me, uh, maybe a little bit more stronger and some, you know, some little bit faster. So that that killed me. But uh, it was good for Liverpool that he came. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll we will touch on the Emil Heskey part, and again, we we appreciate you you going mm-hmm. into that as well. But obviously, going back to the day that you signed, as I said earlier, you arrived with pretty much at the same time as Sammy Appiah, Sam the Best of El, Stefan Ancho, yeah. Vladimir Smitsa, Titi Kamara. You know, I mean, being sat there with that photograph and thinking, yeah, there's a good project there. And it must have seemed very exciting as well. Yeah, it was very exciting. And I saw all the new uh, new players who came in. I knew Sander Westerfeld of, of, of the Dutch competition, of course. Uh, Honcho from the from the German Bundesliga. So uh, there were some familiar names. Sami Hupia. I knew him a little bit. Uh, now I know him a lot better. Um, <laughs> but he was upcoming. 
And uh, yeah, they were building a new team. And uh, it was not funny for Liverpool, always watching to Manchester, see the big results over there and the trophies. And uh, I think a smart manager, Gerard Houdier, who tried to create an, a new kind of football, a new kind of profession in, in, his, in his game or also in his squad. Uh, some players from abroad, a mixture with, with the good English who are there already. I think that worked well. And that was the start from Liverpool to, to, to rise up the level. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And there was a lot of, um, I think there was a lot of talk around that because it was sort of Hulier's first big summer where he was on mm -hmm. his own. Obviously, we had the joint manager situation as well. But yeah. tactically, and as, as a manager for Gerard Hulier, he had great pedigree with the French national team. And again, that must have been, as well as signing for Liverpool, signing for Gerard Hulier must have been um, another reason as to why you, you chose the club. Yeah, he's, he, when I see all my managers that I had in my 18 years of professional football, I think he, together with Christoph Daum, the German coach, that were the two biggest tactical coaches that I had. And uh, Ullier was he was a smart guy. He had a good trainer team around him who were doing the field work uh, with Phil Thompson and Sammy Lee. Um, but that was... He was a clever guy. He made the small talk with, with, with the guys on training. And he let the field trainers do the, their things that they knew very well. And I was really impressed the way he was. He was always calm. He was relaxed and calm till match day. Then you saw tension coming up. But during the week, he was calm. He was so certain that his way of uh, playing with Liverpool, his system, would, would be the best one. Yeah, Eric, and you mentioned obviously when 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 you signed for the club, along those like Jay just mentioned, all those talented players that joined on that day, and you'd also mentioned the good English talent that was also there at the time, and there was a, a young fella called Stephen Gerrard. He was <laughs> he was just coming through the ranks back then. What was your yeah. what was your first impression of Stevie back back when he was a little a, a wee nipper? Yeah, I just knew from a, a, a few matches that we seen on television, and then I came to the training ground. And I saw it the first time. He walked a little bit like Charlie Chaplin with his feet out, his big feet. <laughs> but every time he touches the ball, it was with control. Every tackle was spot on. And he had, a, he had an aggression in himself uh, to always win every small match on the training and the preparation and also during the season. And he was just 19 years old. And uh, yeah. phew, you, you saw, oh, this is going to be a big guy. He already had a certain aura around him. He was a natural leader. And that's and obviously, he's, he, he went on to be in the club captain. And oh, he yes. was one of the best leaders we, we ever had. And, and I think that's the, the testament to the, the squad that we had. Because we had a, you know, a very scout squad. And I think mm -hmm. one of the great things that everyone loved about you, Eric, was that you just fitted in into that dressing room atmosphere no problem because obviously we all knew that Robbie Fowler was a, a big joker in the dressing room and stuff like that but um, I don't suppose he ever got the better of you in terms of pranks or jokes did he? Yeah I was I, I grow up with black humour uh, I can laugh very well about myself I think that's the basis and then in the, I like the dressing room uh, that's the, the only thing that I miss right now uh, 51 years old the dressing room before the match, before the training, after a match, win or lose, uh, uh, tension in the room. That's what I miss. Uh, the guys around, uh, fooling around or staying a half hour or 45 <laughs> minutes longer on the pitch with a goalie and a left winger. Uh, that's what I miss. And Yeah, um, yeah it, it felt well. Uh, I, I like Liverpool. Also, the atmosphere that was there and uh, also living in the center of Liverpool and the people there, I don't know. Uh, I grew up as the son of a butcher. Uh, I learned how to earn my money. Um, I didn't get it for free. Yeah. And that same thing I found in Liverpool. People had to work hard to watch the matches or to achieve something in, an, in another business. Yeah, very well said, mate. Very well said indeed. Um, so when, obviously... You made your debut against Sheffield Wednesday, obviously, albeit in the last couple of minutes. And then there's a few sub appearances the following games. But yeah. before, before we talk about the magic game at Hull, um, how did it feel uh, knowing that you, were, you put on that red shirt playing in front of Liverpool fans for that first uh, time? 
I, I never forget my first uh, match as, as in the starting 11 against Leeds at home. Uh, the day before, I managed to told me you're going to play. I saw it already during the training sessions that week that I had a good chance of playing. And then he said, you're in the starting 11. I went to sleep. I was, I was 29. And I was already years of playing football, but I was nervous. And I went to, to Anfield and sit down on my spot in the dressing room and was tense. I, I saw that I was very tense. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but then you put on your shorts and your socks and, uh, and, and the scouts will say the socks <laughs> and your boots and, uh, and you go out for a warm, warming up that went well. But then you go out and you never walk alone as playing. I'm 189 in centimeters. I think I was two meters or 10. I just went out and I said, come on, this is my match. And we won it. And uh, it was such a great feeling to, to play at Anfield. It was, I had two things that I wanted to achieve, the national team and, and this moment. I'm so happy that I could achieve them both. Super, Mick, fully deserved. But Mick's got uh, a quote about the Leeds game, haven't you, Mick? I have. Um, it was oh. it, it was quite a strange one because we knew we were doing this interview and then I, I was on Twitter and I saw something from Chris Bascom, he, he used to work for the Echo, and he put a tweet up recently about um, Liverpool when we beat Leeds 3-1. Uh, Owen was injured, Fowler was out, Meyer was going to lead the line and the injury ravaged, ravaged Le- side against a strong Leeds team. And then Friday morning at Melwood, Eric walked in, so he asked you for a quote and all you said was, I've only one thing to say, make this your headline, the big Dutchman is ready. And obviously we went and won the game 3-1. What are your <laughs> memories? Do you, do you remember that day and saying that to Chris Baskin from the Echo? Yeah, after I left Liverpool, I st- still had some contact with him. So, uh, yeah, I remember it's, it's, it's easy to say nothing and just pass him. But uh, I'm, I'm somebody who has a, a good self-confidence. Uh, so uh, yeah. I just said, OK. I'm ready. I had a good preseason. I have some substitutions that came in for 10, 15, 20 minutes. You can play me from the beginning. And uh, I, I can say all those matches that I started, there are not many that I lost. It's a good point. It's a really good point, mate. It's a really good <laughs> point. We, 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 did the, we did the stats on it, didn't we, Make the other day? And we were looking at it and going, do you know what? He's got a really bloody good win percentage. So it's like, yeah, yeah. fair play, mate. Good. So, obviously, let's talk about the whole City game um, in the League Cup. It couldn't have gone any better. You know, another start and, um, mm. and two goals. Just yeah. unbelievable, mate. Congratulations on that one. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I was waiting and waiting, waiting to, uh, to make my goals. I, I made them in the reserve team, but that was on a Saturday afternoon or a Monday evening. Nobody's watching or, let's say, nobody's watching. <laughs> um, but for me, those matches were um, a warming up for playing at the first team. So I, I cannot play on 80%. Then I'm not good enough. I have to play 100%, even reserve matches. And um, that was those weeks I needed to be fit for that, for, for that special moment leads or for the special moment uh, in Hull. Yeah, when you score then your first goal, it's, it's a relief because every striker has just one thing in mind. You need those <laughs> things behind yeah. your name. And the less there are, the more pressure you get. And the less there are, the worse you are, in opinion, for people who are not seeing you every day. And um, I had to change that. And it, a game against Hull City in the, in the Cup, it worked out. I scored twice. So we won the game. And uh, I felt really good. And, uh, yeah, that was a relief. It was. And there were two really good finishes, mate. And obviously the first one when you're back, you back to goal and, spin the defender and put it in the far corner, then another one through ball, then you chipped it over the keeper as well. So yeah. people got to see what Eric Meyer was, was capable of from a finishing perspective. And, you know, yeah. that was, as well as being big and, you know, you're throwing your weight around and stuff like that on the pitch, you were a really good finisher at the end of the day. Yeah, and that's the only thing that, I, that happened in the, in the weeks or months after that is that um, you have to do that every week or every second week. And I didn't do that, so... And then uh, professional football is smashing hard. Then somebody yeah. else comes in and takes your position. That's hard, 
but it's also very honest. Mm. You have to score. You have to play good, but you also have to score. And if you don't do that, we take somebody else. And uh, that was a big disappointment. And that's why I also had to leave Liverpool because I felt that I was not good enough to stay on that level. And uh, mm. that's hard for yourself. But yeah, when now when I'm 50 plus, I, I, I understand it better. And that time, I cried a few times at home, yes. Mate, honestly, it, saying those words is really honest with you, honest, honesty to say that, mate. We yeah, appreciate that. But that's, that's the way I am. I, I, yeah. Not, not we got the same. Words. No, it's true, mate. And we got the same from Sean Dundee. Uh, we spoke to Sean Dundee uh, a few mm-hmm. months back as well, and he said the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, where he, he, it was, he believed in his own ability and stuff like that, but obviously the opportunities... Um, weren't there but obviously he, he was very humble about it just like yourself and it just didn't yeah. work out but has no negativity towards it which which is great mate and it's it's very humble of you so we appreciate for that. me also that I, I, not nothing uh, against liverpool uh, yeah. i had to do it eh? i have to be the best guy the best mm. striker and so Ulye says i put him first on, on on the piece of paper and that was not the case so that's true well after the whole game um, you played in your first Merseyside derby, which was quite an eventful one uh, for many reasons. Obviously, to this day, it's still the last time Everton won at Anfield, so it's come 21 years. Now since the <laughs> I last know. One, so, <laughs> so hopefully, I'm not I'm not just chinked it. Um, <laughs> but we, uh, when Sam de Vestel was on the show, um, he said it was obviously a memorable one because he got sent off. Stephen Gerrard got sent off as well. And how was your first Merseyside derby experience as well? Uh, it was cool because there was a big bunch of guys from uh, from my old club, uh, Sittard, uh, yeah. who came to watch the game. So I made already an uh, appointment with them after the match in the Albert Dogs. So uh, the only thing we had to do was win the match, which we didn't do. So, um, yeah, it was, it was hard. It was a tough match. It was Sunday. It was Franny Jeffers. Yeah. Uh, got also got sand off. And, um, yeah, it was hard, but... Okay, that's where derbies are for. It's it's not a friendly match. It's not uh, the girls against the boys. No, it's uh, it's really twenty two men on the pitch, and uh, the best will win. And that game, not the best one, but the one who scored at the beginning of the match. Yeah, true. And we you t- you just touched on there, mate, about um, the, the way you, you've got a the, the English Premier League. You got to bully yourself uh, across mm-hmm. the pitch and stuff, and and that. And it was obvious that was one of your strengths with your ability to bully people off the ball, put yourself about. And I think that really endeared you to the Liverpool supporters and probably endeared you to many of your teammates as well. Because I remember Carragher was quoted of saying what a, a great fellow you were around the pitch and around the dressing room as well. And I suppose, in a way, that was much much of your game, was it? Because if you frame, like you said, you were 189 mm-hmm. centimetres tall, it was it was a big part of your game and it's, it's what you needed to do, wasn't it? Yeah, but that was also my role at Leverkusen. Ulf Kirsten was the guy who made the goals. And I was the one who was playing next to him. So we got the attention of two central defenders. And I, if I could overjump one or get my heading in or uh, use my body really well so somebody else who is uh, coming next to me can play Ulf Kirsten in position, then he made, he made the goals. Yeah. He was the main goal uh, scorer that year, uh, those years. And uh, I was the one next to him. But the coach, the, the audience, and also the, the specialist they saw what kind of work I did for the team. And mm. I liked it to make others play better. As soon as I play, I have to play. Yeah. But if you don't play, you cannot do anything. But uh, I like to, to make other people uh, look good or look better. And I, I h- hoped to do that also with, with Michael or with, uh, with Robbie. And um, it, it worked out. Uh, a couple of games, we, we, we worked really, really well together. Yeah. Also with uh, Titi Kamara. Mm. I had a good relationship with him. Because he was totally different from me. And um, that worked out very well. Especially in the period where Michael and Robbie were both out. Mm. Uh, Titi and me had, or had, we, we played in front. And we had some good results. And uh, yeah, that was, was nice to see that you can, that Liverpool could also play without those big, big, big players. No, and that's exactly uh, spot on. Because we were just about to say then, as the season progressed, because... OK, yeah, the, the goals wasn't there. But like you said, you did help yeah. the team quite a bit because you started quite a few games. And, you know, mm-hmm. there was games against Leeds, Arsenal, away at Manchester United, where you had a big influence on the game and helped us, you know, get points on the board. And do you remember yeah. much about playing at Old Trafford and, and Ellen Road for, against Leeds and Manchester United? 
I'll remember Old Trafford very well because my parents that you saw before uh, were there and my mother-in-law. So they were the wow. first time over in England. And uh, yeah, then I started and I played against uh, Jaap Stam. Uh, my uh, it's a tough my, game. Bold, my bold my bold fellow <laughs> <laughs> on, on my dad <laughs> yeah you had the same hairdresser <laughs> and uh yeah it was it was a tough match against the man united with whew, what a quality they had in the squad and uh but we we were good but we were good because we worked very hard together and i think that that made us good at that moment we don't had one player that made the the difference but as a team, we were really good. And it's, it's so interesting that you say that because, the, like you mentioned, the four strikers that were at the club at the time had all different attributes and you're yep. all different in your own way, which, which worked. Yeah. So you come to March 2000 and Liverpool are signing Emil Heskey. Is it a, was, it, was that a, a surprise for you considering you thought the dynamic was working? Yeah, I, well, I, I played a lot of matches, but I didn't score enough, uh, I guess, for, for the manager. And he, he saw Emil Eski and he, we could buy him. I, I, I don't know the price, but it was a lot of money. And um, then it's obvious that he's going to take more or less the same position. And um, yeah, that's, that, that killed me. And that's, that's why I also thought, OK, I have to see how the start of the next season will be. If not, I have to do something else because it's nice to earn a lot of money and every month get your paycheck. But I'm not here to sit football. I want to play football. So that's why I went to Preston North End. Uh, not to escape, but to be fit when something else comes. It's spot on. It's a lot of... Uh, it's a great attitude to have that not many modern-day footballers have where they'd just rather just sit on their asses and do nothing than take the paycheck, mate. So, yeah, you're absolutely spot on there. But did your relationship with Julia sort of... Did it drop when Heskey was signed? Or was you still... You, no, it was, really good no I think fans. the respect from both sides was still there. Yeah, I, I, I also could understand um, because uh, he wanted to uh, uh, take Liverpool to a higher level. So you need quality players. You need competition in front, in the midfield and in the back. And it was good to have a good and strong competition and the best will play. And uh, no, I had no problems with that. Oh yeah, so you yeah you played a few games and obviously the famous 2000-2001 season before like you just touched on there being sent out on loan to Preston in October of that in 2000 um, and then before you later completed the move to Hamburg in the December. Mm -hmm. At what point, like you just touched on, you kind of covered it, but what, what was the was there like a, a striking moment where you thought I definitely have to leave Liverpool now? Was it the was it not long after Heskey arrived or was do you, do you have like a, a moment in your mind where you thought right now I definitely um... Yes, I still remember that um, in the beginning of the season, every away game, uh, there was one player extra in the squad. And that one player extra uh, went to every away game in his suit with his tie and had to sit in the stands. Not on the bench, but in the stands. So Eric Meyer was sitting every away game in the stands as the extra man. And then I felt so shit. And I thought, this is not what I want. This is not my position. That's nice that I play for the club that I love. But I just play football till 33, 34 maximum, maybe. Um, I have to do something else. So I, I went to the manager and said, I'm, you have to take somebody else who is willing to take position number 17 was at that time. Um, to, to go to every away match and then sit like a fool in the stands. I, I sat there with the emotion of the match, but for the boys, because I trained with them every day. Um, and I felt for the club, but I felt shit with my position. So then I, you have to do something, or you have to accept it. But that was not my way. It, it's just, it, listening to you say that, it's, just, it's, it's madness to the fact that that happens in football, do you know what I mean? And how do, how do you come back from that mentally, knowing that that's happening all the time? I mean, the mental strength of that is, must be 10 times worse for a footballer. Mm. Yeah, but then you just have to talk. And I, I, I swapped a lot of clubs, but I stayed with the same wife. <laughs> 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 and she's, she's, she's my friend, she's my mate. And um, I think it's good that you, when you come home then, you have calm, 
we don't have kids. So we talked about it. And then you find a solution for the, the both of us. Uh, first for me, and then for her also. And she has a happy Eric, then she also has a happy life. That's true, mate. Happy wife, happy life. So fair play to you. It's, 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 it's definitely a motto I live by anyway. So yeah. fair play. <laughs> well, let's keep focusing on happy Eric then, because obviously Liverpool did famously com complete a, a treble in 2001. And yes. the, UEFA, the, the UEFA Cup final will be remembered forever, obviously. But it's also a very special day for you because we want to know all about it now, Eric. Tell us everything. How did you end up drinking with all, how did you end up drinking with all the supporters? And is it true you were wearing... Yeah, your number 18 shirt. So tell us. Uh, yeah, I, t I start by the beginning. Um, I played uh, for Hamburg and I ripped off all my ligaments of my right ankle. So I had a tough operation. Um, that's the, you had to restructure everything. Everything was off. Um, and I was doing my rehab. Uh, and doing my rehab with the guy that I trust and who's living next near Maastricht. Um, where also my friends live, and uh, I, I, I called Sander Westerveld. I said, Sander, I need four tickets for the for the final. I arranged it for you, mate. No problem. And he arranged four tickets. So then I called uh, my physio and my two best mates, and I said, uh, we go for an afternoon to Dortmund. Um, all the guys uh, had a shirt, the shirt that you were are wearing now, um, with number eighteen and Meyer on it. I had the same shirt also on, but I had a jacket over it. So um, one of the guys, my friends, went uh, to one of the bars at, uh, at the Market Square in Dortmund uh, and ordered a beer. And somebody tipped him on the shoulder and said, uh, well, guy, why are you wearing this shirt? Eric Meyer shirt? And he said, yes, because he's over there. And he had four beer in his hand. Because Eric is over there. And as soon as he said that, <laughs> I just remember that I've been drinking beer for hours and hours and just made it to the match. Super, <laughs> mate. So, so what happened next? Did everyone, just, did everyone just flock around you then and just start dancing with you? Or yeah, you it was a, like such a funny afternoon because my physio was with me and he said, no, no risk on your, <laughs> on your ligaments. Everything has to be safe. And uh, then they, they, they held me up on, on a statue. And I had to sing a song, uh, so You Never Walk Alone, uh, I brought out, and um, everybody was singing uh, along. Uh, it was a lovely afternoon. And with, uh, with the tram or the metro, we went back to the stadium. Uh, in that metro, we also had to sing and to share. And, uh, and then that match, the top match, yeah, with, with fantastic goals and uh, celebration and up and down and then winning it. Yeah, it was uh, a day ne I will never forget. And it's such a great story, mate, because I think, obviously, you'd played 27 games for Liverpool, and uh, mm -hmm. you famously said it was a goal every 10 games as well, which I thought <laughs> was, uh, was a fantastic quote, by the way. I, th I, I suppose, did it help having that little bit of, not, I mean, closure's not the right word for it, but obviously yeah. you, had, you had that leaving of Liverpool halfway through the season, it sort of goes unnoticed that you've left, and then all of a sudden now you've got all these hundreds of Liverpool fans who are now singing your name, chanting and singing yeah. with you. You must have thought, do you know what? I, I still belong to this club. Yeah, th that gives you a warm feeling because uh, I'm just this tiny in uh, Liverpool history. And um, yeah, when you see the reaction of, of, of all those guys, uh, some of those uh, supporters, I, I still meet them when I'm, when I'm in Liverpool or when I'm somewhere abroad. Um, yeah, that's something special. Uh, that gave me the feeling that when you were once a Liverpoolian, you are always a Liverpoolian. You, you hear those stories, but when you feel it yourself, it is something extra. Yeah, and it's a, priv a privileged list as well, mate. You know, you're, you're in good company on that list as well. So, uh, yeah, and it's a testament to yourself. You deserve it, do you know what I mean? In that, in that case, the way you've wore your heart um, on your sleeve for the club and that sort of stuff. And then yeah, but getting pissed with the fans years, always helps. Yeah, in those years, I, I gave everything to stay longer at Liverpool, to play more matches, to score more goals. But I was not able to do more. And at the end, I just did, okay, I gave everything. And it didn't work out for a longer period. 
I came together with Sammy. He stayed a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Well, speak, obviously, Sammy went on to win uh, the Champions League with us, didn't he, yeah. in, in 2005? And was, was what you there, a guy. Was you there for, in Istanbul as well? No, 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 no. I use it every time when I, I uh, do my keynotes. I do keynotes. And uh, you never walk alone is my, uh, is my saying in it. And um, I always take the final of 2005. When you're yeah. down and everything is dark and 3 0 behind, you can do two things go to the toilet and shit, or you <laughs> go out and do everything you can. And I, I try to bring this over to the business people and say uh, if it is really worse, there must be some sunshine somewhere. At the end of the storm, there's a golden sky. And I think that's the truth. You have to work for it. You don't get it. Nobody brings you something, so you you have to do something for it. Superb words, mate. Superb. Well, going by the spirit of you never walk alone and never giving up. Uh, right now, Liverpool are on top of the world, uh, especially yeah. from a trophy perspective. You know, the current team now have won the Champions League, the Super Cup, Club World Cup, and obviously, finally, we've won the Premier League, mate. And how much, in your opinion, as a football expert, how much of a fantastic job has Jurgen Klopp done? Uh, since he's been at Liverpool. It's unbelievable how you can change the magic of a club. Uh, Rogers built it up. We have to say that suddenly he made the basis. And then somebody came who, who, who comes into the heads of the players. I think tactically he changed a little bit. But how is it possible that you can get your strikers as far that you say, and you also have that 60 meter sprint defensively. And you, I mean, you, you also have to come in the midfield so other players can play better when you are there. Um, but to get them between those white lines and doing this, the, the, the same thing in the same match, that's something special. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, they touched on all of the good players. You've got seeing like the likes of Genie Van Alden and Virgil Van Dijk. How 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 proud does it make you when you see that obviously your fellow countrymen like that doing doing so well and being such an important part mm -hmm. of this team who've won won all the best trophies in the world in the past two years. And the good thing is those boys came from clubs where they didn't want anything, eh? Or just smaller prices, let's call it that way. And uh, I think that's also something that uh, worked well with Klopp because he had a bunch of boys who didn't won a lot of trophies, but there were winners inside. Yeah. And then as a coach, you maybe can put that 1% on it. And you see also the confidence in Van Dijk when he came and Allison came. You saw the rest of the team were thinking, ah, okay, now we have the solution. Now we have that center defender who's a leader. And now yeah. we have a guy who is not afraid of the goal. Now we have a guy who is uh, playing football with us from the back as a goalie. Now we have a guy who comes out when there is a high ball. And he shout when he shouts, everybody is afraid. And you see all the boys around say, oh, yes. And now we're going to take it. <laughs> Spot on, mate. <laughs> well, Eric, just a couple of last questions for us now. Um, so we always ask okay. our guests, um, because we've got a, a show called The Squad Number Show, where we review every... Um, everybody's squad number. So we always ask our guests, what made you choose the number that you are at Liverpool? Was there any significance to number 18 or was it just you got given it? Um, I wanted number 11, but uh, that was not available. <laughs> 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 so, um, yeah, I, I played with number 18 at uh, Bayer Uerding, my first year in, uh, in German football. And it worked out very well. I scored 11 goals, had uh, nine assists in that season. So uh, I thought coming into a new league, uh, take that number and it will help me to score goals and to give me confidence. Plus the fact that 18 is a, is a big number. It, it puts something on the back. It's not a small yeah. uh, one True. or a small seven. It's 18. <laughs> Super, mate. Well, when we do uh, our squad number show for number 18, make sure you watch it because we'll have a, a nice big profile on and be reviewing you for that as well. Because obviously, okay, yeah. some great some great names of war. The number 18 shirt, like, you know, uh, John Anarisa, Michael Owen himself has, has been there. So, you're in good yeah. company there, mate. And uh, Minamino's got that number at the minute. So, uh, hopefully, he'll do you some, some, do you some proud. But Jamie Carragher, uh, obviously, I, I, I said to you earlier, was, was quoted as saying that Eric Meyer is a great fellow to have around the dressing room. 
He's a great <laughs> fella to have uh, on the pitch and he gives his all. So I suppose that's how you're remembered with, with your teammates at Liverpool and yeah. that's how you remember those Liverpool supporters. And hearing those words from a legend like Carragher, how does that make you feel? Yeah, it's 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 a big compliment because that's something says something about the the, the guy Eric Meyer and not the football player, and I think it starts with the guy. Uh, he is like he is. You you love him or you hate him, and um, I, I I came along well with, with all the English. I think we have a benefit that we Dutch we we speak English. Uh, we could communicate very very well and quick. And um, I see Carrier now and then when he's on the pitch and doing his uh, analysis, and I do mine for the German television. So he also didn't change. He's still uh, uh, talking bullshit, uh, <laughs> doing that for television. <laughs> he did exactly the same that <laughs> a few years ago. So it didn't change a lot, and uh, it's it's a nice compliment uh, to hear it from from him because he's he's a real uh, true uh, Liverpool uh, legend and. He showed a lot of young kids that with hard work, discipline, and a little bit of luck and uh, willing to, to uh, change your style a little bit, you could be a, you could be a legend uh, in, in, in also in this time. Talent, yes, you need talent, really. Without talent, you will never reach this level. But character is also a big talent. Spot on. Okay, mate, so it's our final question. It's probably the toughest one. But take it away, Mick. You 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 like asking this, so go on. Yeah, so I don't know if you've listened to Carragher's podcast recently in the last couple of months. He does, like, at the end of every one of his shows, he asks his guests what's their best five-a-side team that they've played with. And we've done one with Bowler was ending recently, and the amount of names that he played with was ridiculous. But I reckon yours could rival it. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you pick? So you've got one in goal and then four outfield players, the players that you played with in your whole career. Okay. Yeah, doesn't so, doesn't have to so be doesn't have to be just, Yeah, it doesn't have to be just Liverpool players. Can be can yeah, be anybody because the, the best the, the best you played with. So it doesn't have to be Liverpool if any anyone. No, I don't know if it is the best, but I want to win that match. So yeah, I yeah. make it make, yeah. so I make it a good mixture. I yeah. I take Hans Hans from Brooklyn in in goal. Yeah. A uh, Dutch guy, not the most talented goalie, but uh, certainly willing and a very good coacher. So he puts his front people on the right position and in front of him will be Sammy Hüppia. He was for me uh, world class because his profession was defender. Nowadays, I see a lot of defenders who can play a good long ball, but Sammy was first defender, then the long ball. And that's, that's something uh, very, very special. Next to him, I would play with uh, Jens Novotny, uh, center defender at Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, national team player ripped off his crucials three times and came back every time. And he was our captain at that moment. Um, I think that's already a good balance at the back. And then Stevie G, of course, in midfield because he's the best player uh, I played with uh, on that position. Um, wow. I had Emerson at Bayer Leverkusen, who was a wonderful number six, um, but he was absolutely spot on at everything. And then eager in goal scoring and uh, leadership, so he must be on that position. Plus, he's our captain. Yeah. And then uh, in front, uh, we'll take uh, Ronaldo. Not the smart looking from nowadays, but uh, the fatty guy from uh, Brazil. <laughs> yeah. He came in with 17 years old uh, in PSV Eindhoven, where I just came from Maastricht to Eindhoven, and he was unbelievable good. He was. The best striker I ever seen on that in that uh, time, and um, goal scorer in his first season as 17 year old he scored 33 goals. So uh, that says everything. And um, next to him I will I will put either myself <laughs> because I want to play uh, or Ulf Kirsten. And Ulf Kirsten was um, was for me the absolute best striker I played together with in the box. Outside the box there are better. But in the box, first post, Ulf Kirsten. Then we put our hands up already when the cross came in because he, he put it in. He was a killer. <laughs> he was a world-class killer. And I, I think with this team, um, and yeah, we beat them all. Even that, uh, that team from Bolo or from 
Who oh, on, on Sander. Uh, yeah, <laughs> love it. <laughs> really, we'll, have to, we'll have to put them together, won't we, Mick? We'll have to yeah, put them yeah. together and see what they say. We'll, we'll, uh, Eric, we'll send you um, Bolo's team and you can have that banner when you do your tri triathlon. <laughs> okay, perfect, guys. Um, but Eric, we were just honestly, mate, we could talk to you all day. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, thank I just you. want to say thank you very much for joining us um, and taking the time for us to share your Liverpool journey. You're with welcome. Not just us, but obviously there's going to be so many Liverpool fans that are going to watch this and you'll always be remembered as a player who gave us all for the club and everyone will always have your fond memories for that, mate. So thank you very much for that. Um, thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to show my fat Dutch hat again in the, <laughs> <laughs> in the suburbs of Liverpool. And... Um, yeah, I I was and I still am a Liverpoolian and it will be till the end. Super, mate. Guys, thank you very much for watching this episode. We really appreciate it. Uh, give us a like and a comment uh, below. Let us know your favourite memories of Eric as well. Uh, and we will see you next time. Thank you very much. <laughs> see you <laughs> Ta -da. Ta -da. Ta -da. Ta -da. <laughs>